Since launching Siri shortcuts, Apple has added actions concerning weather, which is really cool. So let's play with that. I'm going to hit the plus button in the upper right corner to create a new shortcut. And if we go over to the side menu and we just look at location, that is where we're going to see the weather uh, applications, even though it's not all entirely location based. So if I scroll down, you see there's a section there with weather. There's three actions available. The first one is just getting the current weather. So let's just drag that in. Uh, you can see that that works a couple ways for setting to allow access. You can either use your current location or a custom location. When you use the current location, it's going to be a little bit slower because it's going to have to find your location when it runs the action. I'm going to use a custom location and that's going to be uh, Disneyland. And so it's going to grab the weather conditions. And then the next thing I'm going to do is display that. So I'll scroll to the top, search for a display. We'll do it as an alert. And then I'm going to access the weather conditions. You can see that's shown up in the variable list below. So I'll go ahead and tap that. And I get to pick uh, from different conditions available. I'm going to pick the temperature to begin with. Next, I'm going to use the same variable to add some additional information. I'll say the chance of rain is and there's a variable for precipitation chance. Next, I'll add the UV index, which is probably more relevant in California than rain. And again, you just go over to the variable, drag down to find the UV index, tap it, and done with that. And finally, I'm going to list sunset, because if you're taking pictures, you may want to know. And this time, I'm going to put it on the same line. All right, so I've got an alert that comes up that gives you the Disneyland weather with the temperature, chance of rain, UV index, and sunset button. And there it is. We've got the uh, chance of rain is zero, UV index is zero, sunset is at 1738. So we've got a, uh, a day today that is cloudy, but no rain. All right, so I just paused the camera for a minute and I changed it from displaying the message to writing a text message. And all I had to do for that was drag in the send message um, option. And then I filled it in with my wife's name and I copied the data that I did for Disneyland um, uh, in a text message to her. And so now, in fact, I turned off show and run, so I don't even have to see it go. So now when I fire this off, it's going to grab the weather and send her a text message. Maybe that's my way of telling her I want to go to Disneyland. She's going to have no idea why this shows up in her text message, but there we go. It's done. Okay, next I want to talk about forecasts, because in addition to getting the current weather, I can also get a forecast in the upcoming days. This is a little more complicated, so bear with me. I've got one I've created here called Weather Forecast. And you can download this. It's uh, in the links right below this video and play along on your own device. Um, so what this is going to do, I, I've created it already, is the first thing it does is get the current location. And we need to get the location so we can have the name of the city and uh, just run this as efficiently as possible. And then it's going to present a list of today or tomorrow. So this is only giving me the forecast for two days. Uh, you could make it uh, for additional days and you'll understand how when I get to the end of this video. I wanted to keep this simple. So then it's going to give you a choose from list, say which day for weather forecast, and it's either today or tomorrow, which we see there. Now it's going to look at that input. So if the input contains today, I could have also used equal, but I used contains. Um, if it equals today, it's going to get the weather for the uh, forecast or the current location 
on a daily basis. And that daily checkbox is important. Uh, and the reason is because it'll either grab the forecast on hourly increments or daily increments. With daily, it goes up to 10 days, and I believe it does the same thing with hourly increments. And then you've got to tell it, so which number are you going to get? So if I'm getting um, 10 increments, then is it going to be like increment number one is today, increment number two is tomorrow, and so on. So we know it is today so because that's what we've selected. So that's the first item on the list. And then we can show the result, the weather today in the current location. And then we've got high, low chance of rain, sunrise and sunset. It's important to note here that I did not take this magic variable for these items. Like I'll say here for today's forecast low, I did not grab the weather from the get forecast here. I'll hit the magic variable button. I did not grab this one here because that's all of the 10 instances of it. In fact, let's go ahead and do that for the low. All right. And uh, what that does is it gets 10 versions of the, um, the low temperature as opposed to just one, which is going to get off that get from list. So if I run this, First, it's going to get the location. Then it's going to ask me today or tomorrow. I'll say today. And you'll see there's 10 temperatures for the low. And that's over the next 10 days. So to fix that, I'm going to go back up here and delete that variable. And instead, get the magic variable on the get item from list. Because I got the first item on the list, which is today's low temperature. And I'll go ahead and put that in there. Click done. And then we'll run it again. And uh, we're using today, and that's more like it. So you've got the high and low today, chance of rain, and the sunrise and sunset. Um, so if you didn't pick today, the only other option would have been tomorrow. So um, we've got the if statement, then the otherwise. And there's later discussions in this field guide about the if statement, if you don't understand it. But um, it's since we didn't pick today, it's going to be tomorrow. So we do the same thing. We get the weather and the current location by daily. And then we set the item index to two when two equals tomorrow. If you wanted it in two days, you'd use the number three. If you want it in four days, you'd use the number five. So you can do the math there. Um, and then I create a custom result, the weather for tomorrow. And again, I'm pulling all these variables from this box here, getting the item from list at index two. So I actually have different data. And let's run that one last time. I'm going to tap on tomorrow and you can see the weather tomorrow is a little different than it was today. 70% chance of rain. When I started recording this video and testing this, it was 60%. That's not a good sign for me. Okay. So there are some of the new actions you can do with Siri shortcuts and weather.